Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Aspen and today I'm going to be talking through all of the books that I read in August and September. Also, I know we're in kind of a, a unique spot today for this wrap up. The weather has not been cooperating with me at all today. I've been waiting hours for it to calm down, but it is hailing, it is windy, it is just determined to be a mess today. So I'm trying to sit as far away from any windows as possible to cut down on background noise, but also have like semi-decent lighting. I think I'm failing, but I'm doing my best. That is, that's all I can do. I'm trying my best. We're just gonna go with it for this, this wrap up. So, like I said, this is gonna be for September and August because I did not post an August wrap up at the end of August. So I'm gonna talk you through both. I think it's 30 books total. I think I had 18 in August and 12 in September. September was kind of a crazy month for me. Not really, I'm being dramatic, but I just didn't read as much, which is perfectly fine. We're just gonna write into it. I'm gonna try to be clear, succinct, quick, get us through this as fast as possible, which knowing me is not gonna go well, but I'm gonna try. The first book that I read in August was Everything the Darkness Eats by Eric LaRocca. This book follows a town where people are going missing and you're basically just following a storyline revolving around the missing people, and then a secondary storyline that is a police officer and his husband and kind of just what they're experiencing in the city that they live in. There's a lot of homophobia and just lots of triggers obviously in this book, but that's kind of the secondary storyline. The police officer is not really investigating the disappearances, so they're not super interconnected. Unfortunately, this ended up being a one-star read for me. I've heard other people describe this book as plotless, and I would agree with that, and that is not my taste at all. Like, everything that was happening just didn't connect in any feasible way for me. It didn't make sense, the two storylines we had together. I didn't really understand why they were combined into the same book. The other thing that I really didn't like is that this book does have a few really ableist comments in it that just didn't seem to have any sort of purpose. They didn't add to the commentary that we were supposed to be getting from the book. That combined with not really liking the plot or the story of the book at all led to a one star rating for me. So then after that, I did some rereads. So I'm not gonna talk about these super at length, but I did reread volumes one through four of Heartstopper. I'm sure a lot of people are aware that season two of the show was released in August and it just ignited that desire to reread these books. I read them for the first time in April. So if you wanna know my full thoughts on them, I would check out my April wrap up. I'm not gonna get into it, but I reread all four volumes. They're all obviously still five star reads for me. I love this series. I love not only Nick and Charlie, but all of the side characters, just all of the relationships that happen in this book and the friendships and just everything about it is so feel good to me, even though it covers harsh, hard topics. It just makes you smile a lot of the time. And I love the show as well. So that was my next four reads of the month. Then after that, I read The Guest List by Lucy Foley, finally, like an OG thriller that I just had never read before, which follows a group of people who go to this remote island for a wedding and someone ends up dead and you are just trying to figure out who committed this murder. I'm not gonna talk about this one for very long because I'm sure a lot of people have read this book already. My opinions on it, I ended up giving it three stars. I just thought it was extremely average. It was fine, I wasn't bored, it was quick, it was fast paced, but it was not anything special for me. So I gave it three stars. Then I read The Push by Ashley Audrin, which is a book I've heard very, very mixed things about, but it follows a young woman who gives birth to her first child and she's just having a really, really hard time connecting with her daughter and she feels like her daughter is kind of like doing evil things when it's only her and her daughter and then when her husband's around and she's not doing anything wrong and it's just the mom starts to wonder if she's going crazy, if the daughter actually is like partially evil or like what could be going on, why she's not connecting with her. 
and then she ends up having a second child and very quickly connects with the baby, has no issues mothering the child, and then further starts to believe that there is something wrong with her first child, her daughter. For the first like 50% of it, I was absolutely riveted. I could not put it down. I was obsessed. It was honestly, as someone who does not want to have children, reading the experiences of this mother with her daughter in that first 50% and just the feeling she was having and the things she was saying, it was like every worst fear in my mind come to life. Like that is exactly the way that I imagine being a mother would be because I just don't have that desire in me. And so I felt very seen, but also was like, it was like reinforcing the idea in my head where I was like, yeah, this is not, not a, a life decision I would like to make. So I really, really liked that first 50%. And then the second half got really repetitive and I felt like the ending was really disappointing. So my interest really just fell off in that second half. So I ended up giving the book a three star rating overall. I do think it's a good story. I just wish that it had been a little bit shorter because I think that a lot of the stuff we read about in the second half was really unnecessary. Again, like I said, just very repetitive and the ending, it just was a little lackluster. It, it left something to be desired. So I gave it three stars. Next up, I read A Harmless Little Game by Melly Rain. And this book is very confusing to me because if you've been around since I talked about this in my book haul, I did buy this from a used bookstore. I bought it from Half Price Books actually. And it was in the erotica section of Half Price Books. And this is a series, it's the first of three. I bought the whole series from Half Price Books. Then I like started looking into it more and I was very confused about why it would be in that section because it follows the story of a girl who is sexually assaulted on camera. And then that video of her assault is posted and it goes viral and like everybody knows about it. And I was like, I'm not sure how we're twisting that story into erotica. And I still don't know, even after reading the first book, because the first one, we just are introduced to our main character. We find out that she was sent to a mental institution for like four years after this event takes place. And she's been very isolated, cut off from the world, has no idea what's going on. And right towards the beginning of the book, she is released and sent back home. We find out that her father is a politician. So she's sent back home and immediately they kind of start this really weird media control, watching her, like every move she makes is being monitored. Basically with this undertone of like, so you don't shame your family anymore. And so very quickly she's like, I'm so confused. Like I was assaulted by these four men. We know who they are. Everybody knows who they are. Why are we acting like, I shamed my father and I'm the bad guy in this situation. Like, what is going on? And she finds out that after she was hot, cause she, I mean, she was in the hospital. She had to have surgeries. Like she almost died as a result of this act. She finds out that after they sent her to the hospital, they basically just said, oh, she asked for everything. It was all consensual and nobody was ever investigated, arrested charged with anything. She's just very much been painted as like, this fake victim who regretted asking for it. And so she tried to say it wasn't consensual. It's been made very obvious, at least in the public's eye, that like her father is ashamed of her. And just, we find out immediately that the whole story that's been told to the public is wrong. And she now has to live in the public eye with these people thinking that she basically cried wolf when she didn't. This first book is just following her learning everything that's happened over the years that she's been gone and just kind of breaking down all of the people that betrayed her and lied and just did everything they could to sweep this under the rug. I liked it. I gave it three stars. I think that the rest of the series could be really interesting. It just... It felt a little bit slow, which it's not a very long book. It's only two, about 200 pages, but it was kind of one of those books that I could put down and then just not pick up for quite some time and then pick it back up. And it was just kind of like, eh, I guess I'll read a little bit more, but like it was interesting. So I would say it's it was fine. It was a good intro. I am interested in finishing the series still, 
but it wasn't anything like absolutely fantastic for me. The next book that I read was Hidden Pictures by Jason Rekulik, and this is a thriller that follows a young woman who goes to work as a babysitter or a nanny for this wealthy family, and the young boy that she is watching starts to draw these really creepy illustrations and she's just kind of like trying to figure out what is going on in this house. You get those hints of like something weird is happening here. Everything's not quite what it seems and she's trying to get to the bottom of it. So the book does have pictures and illustrations kind of throughout the whole thing. I did really enjoy this thriller. I thought that it was really fast paced and the story overall was very enjoyable. The thing with this thriller is that it does have a twist that a lot of people find extremely problematic. I'm not a part of the group that has been hurt by this twist, so I don't think it's really my place to determine whether or not the way that I interpreted it is accurate. I ended up not giving it a rating because I just feel very conflicted because I know that a lot of people have felt that it's very insensitive and because I'm not part of that group and I don't think that my interpretation should be the correct one or I don't want to insinuate that I believe that it is. I don't know if it's my place to say whether or not it was appropriate so I just didn't rate the book. After Hidden Pictures, I read Twisted Hate by Anna Huang. This is the third book in the Twisted series. The Twisted series follows a group of women. There's four of them in this friend group. Each book obviously follows a different woman. This book, the woman in the group, her name is Jules and the love interest, his name is Josh, and he is actually the brother of the main female love interest of the first book. They've always had a super tense relationship. They've always fought. They've just never liked each other, never gotten along with each other, and eventually it's proposed by one of them that they start a friends with benefits situation because they feel like they have a lot of physical attraction that they, like, want to express but they hate each other. I ended up giving this one two stars. It is my least favorite in the series because the male love interest Josh was a whiny little brat throughout the whole book. I hated him. I thought he was insufferable and I didn't get that. Like he was shows up in the first book because he's Ava's brother. So we see him some in the first book and I did not get that feeling from him, but in this one I did and in the fourth book when we, whenever we see him, he drove me freaking nuts. I hated him. And then, then, okay, on top of all of that, he does something in this book towards the end that makes my blood boil and I cannot believe that their relationship continued after that and they forgave the situation. I was reading it and I was like enraged. My body was on fire. I was so angry and I will never forgive that action. I don't know how people, I, I'm... so I really like Jules, which is why I gave it two stars but I hated Josh and his actions. And like, I liked the plot that was used throughout this one because each of these books, like they're all a romance story, but each one has this really kind of weird plot, not weird, but like this extra plot line that they add in that will eventually kind of lead to like the extra conflict in the book that's not just the relationship, but there is an extra conflict that happens in each of these books. And the storyline that was used in this one for that extra conflict or situation, I did really like, and I liked Jules. So I gave it two stars, but I hate Josh. After Twisted Hate, I read The Doctor by Nikki Sloan, which is basically just a smut book um, that I had on my Kindle. It's like a boyfriend's dad um, age gap romance. So you're following this young girl who her and her boyfriend break up and she eventually gets into a relationship with his father. She's like 19 and he's like 40 or something. Don't get me wrong, okay? I don't mind an age gap romance. Truly, honestly, there are some that I really like. However, when you start telling me that this man has been having sexual fantasies about this girl since she was 
significantly younger than her already very young 19 years, we have a problem. When you are playing out fantasies that you had about a minor, once you get together, problem, massive problem. I was disgusted, <laughs> to be honest, with just the constant talk about like, oh, I've been wanting to do this to you for years. She's 19. Years? Absolutely not. So I gave it one star. I hated it. After that, I read a poetry collection called Pillow Thoughts by Courtney Peppernell. And I just kind of needed something semi-comforting. So I was looking up like potential options. I came across the poetry collection. I'm not a poetry guru. I've read very little poetry throughout my life, but I decided to give it a try. And this collection is split into different sections. So it's like, if you need love or reassurance or you're lonely or you're whatever. So it kind of targets all different potential feelings that you could be having. Some of the poems in some of the collections, I really, really enjoyed. They brought me a lot of comfort and I had a good time reading. Other sections just like weren't applying to the life I was living at the moment and so they didn't hit as hard. I don't know, I ended up giving it three stars. Like again, some of it was really great, some of it I didn't really have any feelings about, but I'm not, I'm not a poetry girl, so I don't know if it's good or bad poetry. I understood it, which makes me feel like it was maybe very simple and meant for people who maybe aren't the best with poetry. I just don't really get poetry. Fun fact, I used to have a leapfrog when I was a child and I had the Junie B. Jones leapfrog game and I never passed the level where you had to write your own haiku and it ate at my soul for years that I could not write a haiku as a child. So poetry is not my forte, but I thought this was easy to understand. Some of them I thought, I thought were really good. Others I just had no feelings on, so I gave it three stars. <laughs> After that, I read Look Closer by David Ellis, which is a thriller that follows a married couple and the man becomes obsessed with his former girlfriend and he basically just like goes on this mission to re-enter a relationship with her even though he's married and so you're following that you have the wife's perspective as she is like kind of aware of things that are going on and she's got her own things going on and there's a murder that we're trying to solve there's just a lot going on in this book i loved this book. I think this is my favorite thriller ever. I think this is only the second thriller that I've ever given five stars to. It absolutely shocked me with like the big reveal that happens. I, I could not piece it together. It's a very smart book. The way that things are revealed throughout the story is extremely smart because it makes you think you know what's going on, but it doesn't give you enough information for you to actually figure it out. I don't know, maybe some people figure it out, but I didn't. It's one of those books where like, as soon as you find out the reveal, you immediately want to like start from the beginning and reread. It was so, so good. It kept me on the edge of my seat. It is a bit long for a thriller. It's like 450 pages. So I know I've heard the complaint from some people that it's a bit slow, but I don't know, I the chapters are very short, so it kept me very engaged. I also did have the audio and I just listened while reading along that kept me focused, which I think was great. I really liked the audio as well. So overall, this was just like a wonderful thriller experience for me. I don't feel like I've read anything like it. It was so unique to me and it, it shocked me and it was entertaining and I just loved it. So I gave it five stars. Next, I read I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, which is a manga that was recommended. I put an Instagram story in the month of August that was like, books that made you cry. And this was recommended to me, so I decided to give it a try. And it's basically following this friendship between these two high school students. He's very hesitant to be friends with her. He's kind of a loner, but she kind of pulls him out of his shell and basically just like decides he's going to be her friend and forces him into it. And... This was very cute. It was very heartwarming. It was very sad. It was a quick read. I don't have honestly like super strong feelings or thoughts about it. I gave it three stars. I would recommend it if it sounds interesting to you. I have no, no negative feelings against it. It just didn't hit me 
quite as hard as I think it hit some other people. After that, I read Magnum Opus by Caitlin Marceau, and this is another of her short horror stories, and it follows two authors, and they are kind of like competing. They write in different genres, but they're friends, and so they're very competitive with each other. One is super, super successful, and the other is just like not quite as successful, and honestly, I don't know how much is revealed in the synopsis of this book so I don't want to tell you anything else because I don't want to accidentally spoil anything but you're just following those two authors and kind of their competitiveness against each other and it devolves into something way more serious and dark. I ended up giving it three stars. Again this was just this was a good short horror story. I have no negative feelings. It just it was a bit short for my taste and it just kind of left me wanting a little bit more. I've read one other book from Caitlin Marceau and I loved it and this one just did not give me the same type of feelings. I just feel like I didn't have enough time to fully connect to the characters to care quite as much but I did really like the end of the book. I thought it was very clever. Again, I just thought it could have been maybe a little bit longer given me more time to care more about what was going on so I just felt kind of removed, but I would still recommend it. Kaylin Marceau is or seems to be a very wonderful person, so I definitely want to read more of her work and support her. And I'll just plug that I, if you have not read This Is Where We Talk Things Out by her, please read it. It is incredible. <laughs> it is amazing. I read it in January and it was five stars will be on my best of the year list. After that, I read Just Another Missing Person by... Gillian or Gillian McAllister and this is a thriller that follows a cop who is basically being blackmailed to frame someone for a crime and if she does not do that then they are going to reveal this piece of information that they have on this woman that would impact her and her daughter. I did not like this book. I gave this book one star which is maybe a bit harsh, but I'm gonna stick with it. The first thing is, I am very rarely someone who will comment on the writing of a book. I mean, like people talk about like, oh, I love the writing. And in my brain, like, I just don't even know what that means half the time because I don't really notice things like that. I'm not one to notice super beautiful lyrical writing or super simple writing. Like it's not gonna affect me one way or the other as long as the story is interesting. But there were sentences in this book I was like, that is not English. Like, I had to read it a dozen times before I understood what she was saying. And I know that she, I believe she's from the UK. I think this takes place in the UK. So, like, that's probably part of it. But, like, the writing was so hard to grasp and understand the way sentences were laid out. Kind of two other things. It was so boring and just drawn out and long for no, like it's not a long book, but it felt like it was a 600, 700 page. Like it felt like it was massive. And the twists were so pathetic. I literally read the twist and I out loud in my apartment to myself said, you wasted my time for that. Like for that to be the twist, I was mad at having my time wasted when I found out what the twist was. Very reminiscent to how I felt about Local Woman Missing when I found out the twist. It feels like my time has been stolen from me. I thought it was just, I did not like the twist at all. And then the, the third thing I have about this book, which I have to talk very vaguely because I don't want to spoil anything, but the blackmail that is happening in this book and the the event that took place i didn't even how do i even say this without spoiling it it never had to, like you cannot convince me that if the woman had done the right thing in the moment that nothing like because the whole issue was she couldn't do the right thing because that would lead to harm like that would harm her family. If she did the right thing, then her family would be implicated and harmed by doing the right thing. So she covered up this situation that happened and hoped nobody found out. You can't convince me. I don't even, I don't care if you're a friggin' lawyer and you say, nope, yep, Aspen, that's exactly how it would have played out. I don't care, I don't believe you. You can't convince me that if she had not done the right thing, they would have been fine. Like nothing would have happened. So, 
she just got herself in a whole shitload of trouble for nothing. So from the get-go, I was like, you're just dumb. Like, you're just an idiot. Why did you do that? Like, that doesn't make any sense in my brain. And again, you could tell me I'm wrong and I'm not gonna believe you because I would thousand percent believe that if she just would have done the correct thing in the first place, they'd have been fine. But instead, she covered up because she didn't think they'd be fine. And then, now look where she is. So, I didn't like anything about this book, and I gave it one star. The next book that I read was Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. And this is a dark romance where you're following a woman who gets kidnapped alongside her sister's fiancé. And they hate each other, but they get kidnapped by this man and they are held in captivity together and they go through just really really tragic horrible things together. I ended up giving this book three stars mainly because the beginning part like the first 30 or 40 percent was super fast paced super high stakes. You you were just like clutching clutching your pearls? That's not what I was gonna say. Holding your breath? Yeah you were just like holding <laughs> You were just holding your breath, like wondering what was going to happen next, but they end up, is that a spoiler? Let me look up the description of this book. Okay, yeah, it doesn't really say that, so I suppose I shouldn't say that to you guys. But like that first like 30-ish percent was super, super fast paced, and like I said, I just was holding my breath wondering what was going to happen next. But the book for me got very slow after that and very repetitive and I get why. I'm not saying that it was necessarily a bad thing because I understand the the turn that it took and why it turned into kind of like that storyline and the pacing slowed down. But it left me a little bit bored. I think I struggle with books that have such a drastic shift in pacing because I get attached to like the fast quick story and then when it slows down like I just want to return to that faster paced storyline. I just lose interest when like you have me really ramped up and then you just kind of cut it off and it slows way down. I just get a little bit bored. So it wasn't a bad book by any means. It's definitely very dark. I just found like the last like 50 to 70 percent which is a lot of the book to be kind of slow and boring and I just I wasn't invested enough or connected enough to them as characters to care. I think if you are someone who really easily connects to characters, especially characters who go through really traumatic events, if you can very quickly form that attachment to them, this whole book is going to hit you really, really hard. But as someone who's just, I'm not a character driven reader, I don't really care about a lot of characters in a lot of books, I don't typically attach, it made it kind of boring for me the rest of the story. But again, if you are character driven and you attach to characters, you're gonna care about what they go through throughout the rest of the book. So I gave it three stars. It just wasn't the perfect dark romance for me. And then the last book that I read in August, I was trying to talk fast, I'm not doing well, was Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Everybody and their mother knows about this book, but it is about a young girl who is sent to train in a dragon college like learning how to ride dragons and fight in combat with them and you're just following her journey in this college i'm i'm being super high level because i think everybody knows about this book basically i really enjoyed this i gave it four stars i would say like i thought it was a very unique fantasy i really really thoroughly enjoyed it i loved the dragon they can talk to the people and it's very cool and very fun and i'm very excited for the second one but I gave it four stars because it was one of those books that like, even though it didn't ever feel slow to me, I could put it down and not think about it. Like I started this at the beginning of the month and it's the last book I finished in August because I just would read like 50 pages and then I'd put it down and I wouldn't pick it up for like a week. I just didn't have the urge to keep reading and find out what was happening, but it was good. I enjoyed it when I was reading it, but if I put it down, I could forget about it. Also, a lot of people talk about kind of the twist at the end. I guessed it so early on, so that was not shocking to me, but I'm still very excited for the second one. I will absolutely continue reading the series. I do think this is very fun and unique. It just didn't hold my attention as well as it seemed to hold like literally everybody else's attention, so. I gave it four stars. So those were my August reads. Now we can get into what I read in September. Before I talk about the first book I read in September, I need to issue a formal apology to 
all of the fans of this author because I may or may not have been like secretly, silently in my head judging them just a little. And I don't know why, I don't know what it is, but it was just one of those authors. They're so popular. They like people absolutely love and adore every book from this author and something about it to me, I just always told myself like, it's not actually that good. Like people do not know what they're talking about. That people just need to calm down. Like, I don't know why we're getting so worked up about this author and their books. Seriously, everybody take a chill. Like that's how I thought in my head. But I finally decided to try one of the books and I now must admit that I was wrong. That was really hard for me to admit. I was so wrong because the first book I read in September, I'm being very dramatic, was Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I don't know what it was, but I always thought to myself that like her books were not as great as everybody always made them out to be. People were being dramatic. They didn't know what they were talking about. This is now probably in my top 10 favorite books of all time. So let me tell you about it. Book Lovers follows two people who work in the publishing industry and they're kind of like they're not really full enemies, but they're kind of like minor enemies. They just haven't really gotten off on the right foot with each other throughout their experiences together. But our woman, her name is Nora. She is the agent for an author who wrote this really, really popular, like best-selling book that is based in one of those little cute small towns you read about in books. Her sort of nemesis from the publishing world. He's always been very critical of this book and just always kind of been like, you know, like that town, like that's not how it is. Small towns aren't really like that. So flash forward, our main character, Nora, her sister decides that she wants the two of them to go on a vacation together. And her sister loves this book. And so she books them a vacation to the town that is the location of this really popular book called Sunshine Falls. They go on this vacation and while they're there, Nora bumps into none other than her nemesis, Charlie, and finds out that he is from this small town. This book is very much like, it's about their relationship. It's about learning about this town. And it has that like quaint small town like setting and feel to it because they, they're trying to save the town and they're trying to like spruce it up and they're getting to know all the people in the small town and what it's like to be in a small town. And so you have that aspect, you have her relationship with Charlie, and then you also have the relationship between the two sisters. And a lot of the criticism, I remember when this book came out, seeing a lot of like the diehard Emily Henry stands kind of criticizing the book a little bit, or not criticizing is a strong word, but just basically saying like, you know, a lot of this book is about the sisters and not as much about the romance as apparently her other books are. And so that was kind of a common thread that I saw people kind of saying like, I wish it was less about the sisters, but I actually really, really liked that aspect. I thought that it was really sweet and I related to that. Nora is an older sister and I'm an older sister. So she had a lot of feelings and thoughts that I could relate to. And I loved her and Charlie. I laughed out loud so many times reading this book and I don't do that ever. Books do not make me laugh. And I was giggling like a little schoolgirl reading this book. Is that a saying? I don't know. But like, I was laughing out loud. I loved everything about it. I loved the sisters. I loved her and Charlie. I loved the small town setting. Like, it was so, so good. Literally the only like nitpick thing I could tell you that I did, didn't like about this book is that the younger sister calls Nora Sissy, which Gabby just talked about this in one of her most recent videos that she doesn't like this either. And it's just funny because I haven't seen people really talk about it before. It just feels very juvenile to me. I don't like that like they're both grown adults and they're calling like she's calling her Sissy. Actually, one time um, my younger sister decided she was going to torment me for a day and only call me Sissy no matter how many times I asked her to stop and I ended up yelling at her in the middle of a TGI Fridays, put a bit of a damper on the family vacay. It's the only thing I didn't like is that she called her sissy, but everything else about this book was perfection. So I gave it five stars. I am a reformed now understand the Emily Henry girls and I will be reading the rest of her books. 
was a great start to September. I have a candle right here that I keep reaching over and I am going to set myself on fire. The next book that I read in September was Fantastic Land by Mike Bakovin and this follows a group of employees who work at a big theme park and there is a hurricane that is coming through and so they need to do a lockdown but a bunch of the employees end up staying on site to basically just like watch over the park throughout the hurricane and they end up getting trapped on site and things just really really quickly go downhill violence breaks out it's just craziness that happens on the site of this theme park after the hurricane goes through while they're waiting to basically be rescued. I really, really like the premise of this book, but I didn't like the execution. So I ended up giving it two stars. Like, I think that the idea for this book is great. I loved it, but it's written entirely in like interview format. So there is literally no dialogue throughout the entire book. And it is just massive paragraph. It's just all description. There's no dialogue because it's all happening after the events. They're recounting everything. I think if this had been written as a live action, it's taking place when they're on site and you're seeing things as they're happening, it would have been a million times more interesting and more readable but because of the format of the writing and having it be just these descriptive paragraphs with no dialogue, it was so hard for me to get through. It took me so long to read. I couldn't read more than like one chapter at a time because I would just get so bored. Like I need dialogue to break up paragraph after paragraph of description. So unfortunately this one didn't work for me, but I do think the idea of the book was really... Please hold. Sorry about that. Someone decided to start up a construction project in the middle of the hallway. Rude. Anyways, like I was saying, I think the idea for this book is really interesting and could have been really, really entertaining and fun. But for me personally, the style of it just didn't work and I found it really hard to get through. The next book I read was A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole. This is a young adult romance that follows these two kids who They've grown up together. They were next door neighbors. The boy ended up moving to the United States from Norway when they, he was very young and they immediately became friends and they've remained friends all the way into their teenage years they, and they eventually start dating. And then when they're, I think around 16-ish, 15 or 16, the boy finds out that his family needs to go back to Norway temporarily. And so he leaves and they're, eventually they lose contact, their relationship ends, they're not speaking to each other, and he comes back a few years later, I think they're now like juniors or seniors in high school, and they like are reunited with each other because they're still t next door neighbors. The boy, Rune, is basically like, why did you stop talking to me? Why did you stop calling? Like, what the heck is going on? And he's very upset, and we learn that the girl, Poppy, has something going on that she just didn't want him to know about. And so we're we're kind of trying to learn her secret along with him. This book made me cry three different times, which it's almost impossible to make me cry once. So to make me cry three different times is just insane. I ended up really, really liking this. It is YA. It's kind of cheesy. One of the characters, just the way they view a lot of the things happening in life, they're very, they feel very unrealistic if you're not that type of person. Like for me personally, like I'm, I would never be that type of person. So it, it does feel kind of unrealistic. Like I said, it's a bit cheesy, but it's YA. You go in knowing that. It's cute. The way they love each other and their relationship is just cute and sweet and it made me cry and I just really really liked it. So I gave it four stars. It's not a masterpiece by any means. It's not the greatest thing I've ever read but it made me feel good even though it's a it's a very sad book so you know be prepared for that but I really liked it so I gave it four stars. The next book that I read was Don't Let Her Stay by Nicola Sanders, which is a thriller that is on Kindle Unlimited. It follows this family. You have a woman and her husband, and they find out that her husband's child from his previous marriage, she's an adult woman now, but she is coming home to visit. Her and her dad have been estranged for years, a lot of it because of his dad's relationship and marriage to the new woman but she eventually comes home and ends up 
spending some time there, ends up needing a place to stay, and very quickly it becomes kind of obvious that the daughter does not like the wife and is doing anything she can to like make the wife look bad in the husband's eyes and just kind of make them strain their relationship. I ended up giving it two stars for a few reasons. One is it's just every ounce of average for a thriller. Like there's absolutely nothing about it that is unique or different. I've read a hundred other thrillers, that's being dramatic, but a lot of other thrillers exactly like it. Every twist that happened I've seen a million times, so it was not catching you off guard. The other thing is a lot of this book, like you are enraged reading this book. And that's the point, like that is the intention. I know that one, 1,000%, 1, I know that that was the intention was for you to be angry while reading it, but it made it so unenjoyable to read. I almost broke my Kindle in half on multiple occasions. Like I had to put it down every five minutes because I was so angry and like I was overheating and it was like, like my chest was constricting. I was having chest pains from how angry I was. I get to an extent writing some element into your book that like plays into it. And yes, you wanted people to be angry, but like it was on a whole different level with this book to the point that like it severely negatively impacted my experience reading the book. You can write things into a book that I don't like or agree with, but they still enhance the reading experience and enhance the twists and the things that happen. But again, because none of these twists were unique, it was all something I've seen time and time again. And again, I know it's the point. So someone else could say like, oh, she made me feel so strongly. I'm gonna give it a four stars. But for me, like it, I hated the book because of it. Knowing that that was the intention, I hated the book. It was so miserable to read. I don't know why I finished it, but I did. Don't, don't ask. Don't be like, why did you even... I don't know. I just did. That's my experience with it. Other people could disagree with that. I don't know if other people ever think about that. Like when there's an element in a book that is intentionally written to make you feel a certain way and then it does that, but it makes you feel bad how you balance rating it, knowing that like the author succeeded. They did what they intended to do, but it made me hate their book. How do you, I don't know how you war with that situation. I haven't figured it out yet, but I gave the book two stars. Then I read Blood on the Tracks volume two by Shuzu Oshimi, which is a manga, it's a series, it's the second book, so I can't be super specific, but the manga series itself follows just this mother-son relationship that kind of has some like creepy unsettling elements to it. I gave the volume two three stars. I gave volume one three stars. They're really, really quick to read, but I'm just not invested. I don't care about the story whatsoever. It feels like virtually nothing has happened in either of these two volumes. So I have no intention of continuing the series, but I'm not like mad about it or anything. Again, it, it was so fast to read. I just feel like absolutely nothing, nothing has happened for two volumes. So it, it's lost to me. I'm, I'm no longer interested in continuing with the series. Then the next set of books, I'm not gonna talk about too in depth because they were in my read with me for a week vlog. Throughout that vlog, I did read Free Me by Ashley and Roz Tech, which is the final book in the Wit Sex series that follows a young girl who's in witness protection. And then she eventually meets and starts a relationship with four men. They're all brothers, they're her next door neighbors. So it's a dark, why choose romance. This is the final book. I absolutely adore this series. This series is a five star favorite of all time series, but I found this book, the last book to be really disappointing. I don't think we got what we needed out of the ending. It felt very rushed and very surface level when the rest of these books have felt super in depth and super serious. I just didn't think we spent the time we needed resolving the situation that's happening throughout the books and it just spent way too much time on smut in this book. It was the, the smuttiest of the four, but it was like, while we were supposed to be in these super high stakes, intense situations wrapping up what's been going on, we just got 200 pages of smut and then like a really quick ending and I just wasn't satisfied. But I gave it three stars. I still love the series, just didn't like the conclusion. Then I read None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell, which is a thriller that follows two adult women who are birthday twins. They were born on the same day and they eventually meet and go work on a podcast together. Without giving too much away, we find out that one of the women has kind of a darker secret history that we're slowly learning about throughout the book and their progression of filming this podcast. Also, in between some of the chapters, you get snippets of what appears to be a Netflix documentary that is made about the situation that ends up happening between these two women. The documentary is called High on Your Birthday Twin, and it's just 
sharing snips of the podcast and interviews with other people who were involved. But I personally did not love this. I thought it was really slow and really repetitive and boring. And there are also some ideas and things throughout this book that I just don't like. It feels wrong to me to insinuate some of the ideas that are insinuated in this book. It's just a personal preference. I didn't like it. I gave it two stars. Then I read The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, which is the prequel to the Hunger Games trilogy that came out a few years ago. It is following the backstory of President Snow from the Hunger Games, and we are following the year in which he is selected to be a mentor for the 10th Hunger Games, and we're following the relationship that he forms with the tribute that he is selected to mentor. I thought this was just fine. I don't think we needed it. I don't think the Hunger Games necessarily desperately needed a prequel or this one. I think the idea of the Hunger Games and how it all came to be and they came up with it would have been really interesting to see as a prequel. But in this one, we just got little tiny snips of the development of the Hunger Games and just little teasers of things that I thought were interesting. But the rest of it was just kind of snow story, which I wasn't dying to have. I gave it three stars. I thought it was fine, but I don't think it was necessary. I don't think we needed to have this prequel. I realized I forgot to tell you guys about Butcher and Blackbird, which I read in the Read With Me For A Week vlog as well. So a lot of you, if you've seen that, may already know how I feel. But that is a book that revolves around two serial killers who meet when they are attempting to kill the same serial killer. So they are serial killers that hunt down other serial killers. And they decide to start up this competition where once a year they go to a city and they try to catch the same guy and whoever catches him first wins. And it's like a dark romantic comedy so they also eventually end up developing some kind of romantic relationship. I did not like this book really at all. I gave it two stars because first of all there's just so many time jumps and so many moments when you're told like oh they talk all the time they're so close but like we don't see any of that i felt absolutely unconvinced that they had really any chemistry at all because the only time i saw them was when they spent the few like days together once a year going on this little hunting expedition so i just didn't feel like they had any chemistry and it just felt like I missed out on a lot of their relationship. Like I was told that things happened, but I didn't see any of it. It was also very slow and kind of boring when I thought it was going to be super quick and fast paced and it just wasn't. I also absolutely hated the smut in this book and I talk about it some in that vlog and I don't want to like be overly dramatic, but one of the scenes, the very first ones, literally made me want to throw up. So then I was skimming the rest of the smut, which I like smut so it's sad to have a book that has it and makes it feel like I have to skip it because it's just if I could explain without like I don't want to be gross and I don't want to give spoilers but I wish I could explain one of the scenes like to people who haven't read it to give you the idea of like what I hated so much about it but I'm not gonna do that to you so not a fan was a two-star book for me unfortunately but I've heard lots of great things about it like every review I've seen aside from mine and one person commenting on my vlog was that people love it so you know I'm definitely in not the popular opinion here so if you still want to check it out go for it I'm not gonna tell you not to it just didn't work for me and then the last book I read in that vlog was How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix which is a horror book that is following the story of two siblings whose parents pass away and they don't really get along they don't really have a relationship but they need to come together to just deal with their parents estate the funeral the house everything like that and as they're trying to prepare the house for sale, they figure out that something weird is going on in this house that they need to deal with before they can sell. I didn't love this book either. I ended up giving it two stars. I don't even know how to formulate my thoughts about this book, to be honest with you. Like, not a lot happens in this book. And the thing that's supposed to be like the scary, creepy element just felt silly to me. I couldn't take it seriously. And I feel like the tone shift, like, there were parts of this book where you were talking about grief and just the siblings dealing with the loss of their parents were so, so serious. And then they would transition immediately into a scene involving this other thing that I don't want to give away. And I, it was so ridiculous that I was like, I, I, I couldn't really deal with the, the massive extreme tone shift from serious to ridiculous. 
And then I was like, am I interpreting it wrong? Like, am I supposed to be scared by these things that are happening? And if I was, I wasn't, I just, this book didn't work for me. And then on to the last two books that I read in September, we have Twisted Lies by Anna Huang, which is the final book in the Twisted series where you are following Stella, the final girl in the friend group that this series follows. And then the male love interest's name is Christian and he is the landlord of the building that Stella lives in and him and Stella eventually get in a situation where they enter a bit of a fake dating scenario. I really liked this one. This is maybe my favorite of the series, either this one or the second book. I gave this four stars. I really liked Stella. I liked Christian. Again, the storyline that they bring in to add to the conflict that's not just the relationship, I found really interesting and entertaining and very creepy. And I just, I was very invested in that storyline and in Stella and Christian as characters and their relationships. And that is the end of the Twisted series for me. So three of the four books in that series were four star reads and we won't talk about the one that I talked about earlier. And then the last book that I read in September was The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin. And this follows an author who she wrote a like best-selling self-help book, I think it was. So she becomes kind of like semi-famous, but she eventually ends up buying a house in which a murder-suicide took place many years ago but the house has kind of always sat vacant ever since that event took place. But she ends up buying it because she wants to remodel and resell the home. She thinks that a lot of her audience are gonna be like super invested in the remodel process and just hearing everything that's going on. But very quickly once she arrives, she figures out that people are not super thrilled that she is messing with the home. They think that it should be left alone, that it should be respected. The town is just really doesn't want anything to do with this house. They want it removed. They just want the whole thing to be left alone. But she goes through with it. She moves into the house and they start like doing the remodel. And very quickly, like things start to go wrong. People are getting injured in very mysterious, strange ways. She's starting to become very paranoid. Her cat is getting sick. Like just all kinds of things start going wrong and we start trying to investigate what's happening in this house, what it could be that's like causing all of these things. Is the house haunted? Is there something else going on? I ended up giving this three stars. I feel like this for me was just kind of the definition of average. Not amazing, not terrible by any means. There were some moments at the end of this book where I was genuinely like a little bit spooked. I was reading it in bed at night and it was dark and kind of had like moody lighting going on and I was getting a little bit creeped out by some of the things that were happening. So it did have very atmospheric moments that made me feel like I was in the moment seeing what was happening. So I, I liked it. It just wasn't incredible or super groundbreaking. I honestly don't even know if I'd really describe it as a thriller. I don't know what I would call it, but it's not like super thrilling. It's just kind of this like slower, dark mystery maybe. So that is the last book that I had to talk about today. I would say September wasn't necessarily like the greatest reading month for me, August either really, but I did find two favorites with Look Closer and then Book Lovers, like I said, honestly, is probably in like my top 10 favorite books of all time now. So not the greatest months overall, but I did find some favorites. I did have a lot of books I really liked. I just also had a lot that I didn't love. So that's all I have for you today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.